welcome you in the lecture series of random processes detection and estimation. It is eighth lecture of this series. In the previous lecture, we have discussed about the classification of random process, where we have discussed about stationary random process, non-stationary random process, wide sense stationary random process, mean ergodic process, independent process, Markov process, counting process, Poisson process, and Weinert process. And in this lecture, we will discuss about white noise and linear system with random input. And the outline of this lecture are we will discuss first what is the white noise and after this we will discuss about the LTI system and linear system within random inputs. And in the, uh, in the objective of this lecture, you will be able to explain the meaning of white noise and what will be the output of LTI system if the input is the random process. Now we start with the white noise. A continuous time white noise process is a white is a wide sense stationary zero mean continuous time random process. If the power spectral density is a con is a constant at all frequency, so the power spectral density will be n naught by two. This is the constant, and the inverse Fourier transform uh, will give you the autocorrelation function. So the autocorrelation function of the noise process will be 1 by 2 pi integration minus infinity to infinity s n omega e to the power j omega uh, tau d, uh, d omega. So it will be n naught by 2 into 1 by 2 pi minus infinity to infinity e to the power j omega tau and this value will be the inverse Fourier transform of unit impulse function del tau. So I can write R n n tau it will be uh, and and not by two delta. So it is also known as it is also known as Dirac delta function. And you know the noise uh, has the constant power spectral density, and so its name is white noise. And the autocorrelation function will be the impulse, and the height of the impulse is n not by two because r x x tau. It is n naught by 2 delta and the power spectral density is constant n naught by 2 over all frequencies. White noise drives its name by the analogy with the white light which have all the visible light frequencies in, it, in its spectrum. In practical or real world, noise also approximate white noise. Uh, for example, thermal noise, it has a near flat spectrum at all frequencies that are likely to be used in radio wave, in microwave or millimeter wave systems. Let us take one example. A wide sense stationary noise process has autocorrelation function R n n tau is equal to p e to the power minus 3 more tau where p is the constant. Find the power spectrum and you know the power spectrum it will be Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. So uh, integration minus infinity to infinity p e to the power minus 3 tau e to the power j omega tau d tau. So uh, we can calculate this uh, uh, by parts p 0 to infinity e to the power minus 3 uh, plus j omega tau d tau plus p minus infinity to 0 e to the power 3 minus j omega tau d tau and we can calculate it is p upon 3 plus j omega plus p upon 3 minus j omega it is 6p 9 plus omega square so i can plot this autocorrelation function as you can see p is to the power minus 3 tau and the power spectral density it will be it will be it will be p by 3 uh, between minus 3 to plus 3 and at is at omega is equal to 0 it will be 3 uh, 2 p by 3 and between omega is equal to minus 3 to uh, plus 3 it is uh, p by 3. N noise is having a non zero a constant power spectrum over a finite frequency band and a zero as 
is known as band limited white noise and it, it may be low pass band limited noise and band pass band limited noise low pass band limited noise so you can see the spectrum power spectrum of the noise will be uh, from omega minus omega minus w to plus w it is p pi by omega and else it is zero so the power spectral density and the autocorrelation function of this power spectral density will be the uh, inverse Fourier transform and you can see it is the sink function so power spectral density you can define as p pi by o, uh, pi by omega when omega between plus w to minus w and else it is zero and this autocorrelation function will be p sine omega tau by omega tau so this is the low pass band limited noise and band pass band limited noise it will be uh, defined by mod omega will, when mod omega greater than omega w naught minus omega by 2 uh, and uh, less than w naught plus omega by 2 it, uh, the value of power spectral density will be p pi by omega else it is zero so and the autocorrelation function it will be p sine omega tau by 2 upon omega tau by 2 cos omega naught tau and this, uh, this is the p is the power in the noise so we can sketch this between these the value is p pi by omega and else it is zero the power spectral density is zero on the other side and the autocorrelation function will be the sink function and cos omega not t so it is the band limited it is a band pass band limited noise now Fourier series and Fourier transform we can decompose one class of waveform into some of discrete sinusoidal so we have a discrete collection of frequencies and it is known as it is known as Fourier series expression for the periodic waveform so if you have periodic waveform then x t will be equal to x t plus t and it will be equal to k minus equal to summation k minus infinity to infinity c k is to the power j 2 pi by t k t is the Fourier expansion of uh, the, the signal x t and uh, this can where c k will be 1 by t integration x t is to the power j 2 pi by t k t bar d t or you can say uh, it is 1 by t integration x t is to the power minus j 2 pi by t k t d t and there are certain uh, conditions under which Fourier analysis can be done and be done. they are called the Dishlet condition and the Dishlet condition are finite number of discontinuity in a finite interval time so there should be finite number of uh, discontinuity means if uh, you are having a signal between 0 to t and I introduce discontinuity in the middle of this uh, time duration so in the time duration I am creating the discontinuity in the midpoint from 0 to 2 means at t at t by 2 I create the discontinuity now from t by 2 to t in the between I will create the discontinuity at this point so I continue this process I produce that discontinuity so this is there are the infinite number of discontinuity uh, between 0 to t now so it should not be there uh, for the dislect condition the finite number of discontinuity in the uh, finite interval of time should be there uh, and uh, another condition is the finite number of maxima and minima in the in the finite interval of time and third is the bounded variation there should be one bounded variation for the Fourier series expansion and uh, we can decompose both periodic and non-periodic signal into some of uh, different waveforms of different frequency this is known as the Fourier transform and uh, 
uh, Fourier transform is a tool that breaks a waveform into alternate representation. We can apply the Fourier transform in radar, astronomy, signal processing, analysis of LTI system. One practical example of Fourier transform application is to use in the musical system where we can tune to a particular frequency to listen the vocalist or the drum or the piano or other instrument individually. Now we will discuss LTI system. A system is a mathematical model of physical process uh, that relates the input signal X to the output uh, means response signal Y. Then the system then the system is viewed as the transformation or mapping from x to y and this transformation is represented by the operator t and so i can write as y will be the operator t is applied to the input signal and this is known as the representation of the system if x and y are continuous time signals then the system is known as the continuous time system if x and y are discrete time, discrete time signals, then the system is known as the discrete time system. If t is a linear operator, linear operator means if uh, I'm applying the t to the input x1 plus x2, then it will generate t x1 plus t x2 means y1 plus y2 in the sense. And this uh, property is known as additivity property of the system. And also if uh, if I if I multiply with some scalar uh, with, uh, to the input, then the same scalar should be appear in the output. So it is known as the homogeneity condition uh, of the uh, system. And then the system representing re representing by these two uh, additivity and homogeneity, uh, then the system you know the system is known as the linear system, and this alpha is the scalar number. So uh, to represent a system that is it is linear we have to uh, show we have to show that the system is additivity the system follows the additivity and homogeneity both and so uh, these two uh, combined in known as linear uh, produce a linear system so a system is a time invariant if a time shift in the input signal cause the same shift in the output of the signal means if uh, I am introducing some time origin shift the same time origin shift will be there in the output in the system this is known as the time invariant system then so for example let us take y is equal to x t plus 5 is it linear the question is it is linear to show the linearity we have to show the additivity and homogeneity both conditions should be followed there so here you can see uh, first if i apply x1 t plus x2 t so what will be the output y dash t so for, uh, for additivity means you can see that the output will be here you can see the input plus 5 some dc level 5 so the, here the input is x1t plus x2t and it, uh, it will add the dc level 5. So output y will be x1t plus x2t plus 5 but it is not equal to y1t plus uh, it is y2t. So uh, this system is not additive system so it, it, because it, it is not follow, it is not following the additivity uh, here y1t plus y2t it will be it should be x1t plus x2t plus 10 but it is not it, it, the output is x1t plus x2t plus 5 so it is not additive and we will check the homogeneity of the system if i multiply some scalar to the input xt so what will be the output here you can see the output will be alpha xt plus 5 because the output uh, is input plus some dc level 5 so the input is alpha xt plus 5 so it is not equal to alpha yt because alpha yt will be equal to 
alpha x t plus alpha 5 it is not so the system is not homogeneous system here so we can say that the system is non-linear system here now for the linear time invariant system LTI system for continuous time LTI system output y will be the integration of h lambda x t minus lambda d lambda and uh, this is known as the convolution integral and you can also represent it as yt is equal to xt convolution of xt means this is the convolution and this xt is the impulse response of this LTI system means x ht will be t and lambda t del t means the impulse response if we had applied the in the impulse at the input whatever will be the output it will be the impulse response of the system and for the discrete case y n will be uh, equal to summation i minus infinity to infinity h i x n minus i and where uh, this is the convolution sum and x n will be the p operator on the impulse from impulse function or it is impulse response or the, or the unit impulse response of a discrete time LTI system now if a periodic signal is passed through the LTI system what will be happen so this is the periodic signal applied to the LTI system periodic signal means xt is equal to xt plus tau so X, xt plus t because t is the period of the signal and I can represent by the Fourier series as this, uh, sigma uh, k minus infinity to infinity c k is to the power j 2 pi by t k t so what will be the output you know the output will be minus infinity to infinity h tau x t minus tau d tau from the previous slide and so you can write here as uh, integration minus infinity to infinity h tau and x t minus tau it will be a summation k minus infinity to infinity c k is to the power j 2 pi by t t minus tau k dt so from here you can see that uh, if i will take h t and this part which is not a function of tau so I will take outside from the integration it will be summation k minus infinity to infinity c k is to the power j 2 pi by t k t and integration minus infinity to infinity h tau is to the power minus j 2 pi by t k t d tau and this is the Fourier transform of impulse response h omega you know h omega is to the is equal to minus infinity to infinity h tau is to the power minus j omega tau d tau here uh, omega is equal to 2 pi by t k t and so i can write the output y will be summation k minus infinity to infinity c k is to the power j 2 pi by t k t h 2 pi by t k so you can see here the output will be the input this, this is the input part this is the input part into the in the Fourier transform the impulse uh, the Fourier transform of impulse response so output will be the input into Fourier transform of the system so now we will discuss the mean of the output random process so here you apply the random process x to the input of the LTI system whose mean value is mu x and the output is the random process y so we have to find out the mean value of the random process of y mu y what will be the mu y you know for x i t the output sample i y t is x i t will be 
T operator X I T means T operator on the input and output Y T will be equal to minus infinity to infinity H lambda X T minus lambda D lambda. So from this uh, you can find out the expected value of Y will be the expected value of uh, this part means expected value of integration minus infinity to infinity H tau X T minus lambda D lambda and from here you can find out uh, it will be the uh, integration minus infinity to infinity h lambda and the expected value of x t minus tau uh, t, t minus lambda d lambda so from here you can see if the input is wide sense stationary random process wss then the out then uh, this uh, this mean value expected value x t minus lambda it will be equal to x t lambda because uh, here it is stationary what sense is stationary and so the mean value will not be changed uh, will be unaffected so uh, if it is mu x so it will remain at x t minus lambda so the value the value of expected the, expect, the expected value of x t minus lambda will be equal to mu x so you can write here the mu x integration minus infinity to infinity h lambda d lambda and uh, this is uh, this uh, you can write this as mu y expected value for random variable output random variable y will be the expected value of input random variable and this part uh, uh, minus infinity to infinity h lambda d lambda is the h naught uh, this is the zero fre zero frequency uh, response of the system because the frequency uh, because the Fourier transform of frequency response of the system is minus infinity to infinity h h tau e to the power minus j omega tau d tau. If I will put omega zero, so h naught will be minus infinity to infinity h tau d tau. And so this is here. So this is the zero frequency response of the system. So from here we can conclude that. The mean of the output random process produced at the output of the LTI system in the in response to the wide sense stationary random process XT is equal to the mean of XT multiplied by the zero frequency response of the system. Now autocorrelation function of the output random process let T and U are the two values of time at which the output uh, random process is measured. So the R Y Y T U autocorrelation function at instant T and U it will be the expected value X T uh, uh, Y T and Y U. So I can write it as expected value um, integration minus infinity to infinity H tau one X T minus tau 1 d tau 1 integration minus infinity to infinity h tau 2 x x t minus tau 2 d tau 2 and from here i can write it as minus infinity to infinity h tau 1 d tau 1 and minus infinity to infinity h uh, tau 2 d tau 2 and the expected value of x t minus tau 1 x t minus tau 2 and uh, this uh, this expected value is known as the uh, autocorrelation function of x and if uh, t minus u is equal to tau so it will be r y y t u or r y y tau it will be double integration minus infinity to infinity h tau to 1 and h tau to r x x t minus tau 1 plus uh, tau 2 d tau 1 d tau 2 as I told you that it is the autocorrelation function of x and the, this, this is the uh, function of time lag tau so r y y 0 is equal to the expected value of y square t uh, from the definition of autocorrelation function and it will be equal to minus infinity to infinity double integration h tau 1 h tau 2 r x x tau 2 minus tau 1 d tau 1 d tau 2 here 
you have written the value of uh, this tau is zero here so it will be the mean square value of the autocorrelation function and means the autocorrelation function at time at a zero time lag now it is the value at this point and now the power is spectral density of the output random process you know the fourier transform of autocorrelation function is the power spectral density for the wide sense stationary process so the power spectral density s y y omega is of the lti system having the transfer function h omega it will be the it will be the fourier transform of r y y tau so it will be uh, s y y omega will be equal to integration minus infinity to infinity r y y tau is is to the power minus j omega tau d tau and uh, from the previous uh, slide i can put the value of r y y tau here so it will be the double triple integration minus infinity to infinity h tau 1 h tau 2 r x x tau minus tau 1 plus tau 2 is to the power j omega tau d tau 1 d tau 2 and d tau so we have the double integration here and if i consider tau 1 tau minus tau 2 plus tau minus tau 1 plus tau 2 is equal to tau naught so s y y omega it will be triple integration minus infinity to infinity h tau 1 h tau 2 r x x tau naught is to the power g omega tau naught tau 1 and tau 2 this is the plus tau 2 and d tau 1 d tau 2 and d tau naught so from here i can write integration minus infinity to infinity h tau 1 is to the power g omega tau 1 d tau 1 so i am separating this tau 1 and this tau 2 from this integration so it will be minus infinity to infinity h tau 1 is to the power minus j omega tau 1 d tau 1 and integration minus infinity to infinity h tau 2 is to the power plus j omega tau 2 d tau 2 this is the second and multiply by integration minus infinity to infinity r x h tau naught is to the power minus j omega tau naught d tau naught so i have separated all these three parts and so here i can write this is the Fourier transform of this function h omega and this is h conjugate omega and this is the power spectral density s x x omega input power spectral density so here i can write this as the output power spectral density will be equal to mod square of so the output power spectral density will be the squared magnitude of the transfer function and multiply by the uh, power spectral density of the input random process so from this uh, result we can conclude that the power spectral density of a random process yt at the output of a lti system uh, in response to the uh, wide sense stationary process xt is equal to the power spectral density of the random process xt multiply by the square magnitude of the transfer function of the system or you can say the uh, response of the filter now the mean square value of the output random process you know r y y tau will be equal to 1 by 2 pi uh, minus uh, integration minus infinity to infinity s y y omega is to the power j omega tau d tau is the inverse Fourier transform you know this is and so you can write it as um, 1 by 2 pi minus infinity to infinity and the uh, square magnitude of the transfer function and the uh, input s x x omega is to the power j omega tau so you have put the value s y y omega from the previous result here and so and if i put tau is equal to 0 
so r y y zero mean mean square so it is a mean square value will be expected value of y square t it will be one by two pi integration minus infinity to infinity and the square magnitude of the transfer function and the far spectral density of the input is the integration of this so uh, from this result i can say that the mean square value of the output lti system uh, yt is equal to the integral over all the frequencies of the power spectral density of the input random process and uh, multiply by the squared magnitude of the transfer function of the system now we consider the uh, average power of the output random process the uh, the mean square value of the output of the lti system is the average power so the average power py py y tau it will be so average power py y tau it will be the mean square value e expected value of y square t means the auto correlation at zero time lag it will be equal to 1 upon 2 pi integration minus infinity to infinity and this is the square magnitude of the transfer function and the and the power spectral density of the input and ohm and d omega so it will be equal to 1 upon 2 pi minus infinity to infinity s y y omega d omega now consider the example find the power spectrum and average power of the output process when input random process xt is the white noise so this is the circuit and you have to find out the power spectrum and average power of the output yt so you know the power spectral density of the input is n not by 2 and the power spectral density of the output will be the squared magnitude of the transfer function of the system and the power spectral density of the input with the multiplication of these two will be the uh, power spectral density of the output random process and here from this figure h omega will be 1 upon 1 plus j omega l upon r and magnitude square magnitude will be 1 upon 1 plus omega whole square of omega l upon r so put this value here you will get the out the power spectral density of the output random process will be n not by 2 divided by 1 plus omega l upon r whole square and this is the output power spectral density and you can find out in the average power average power means the you have to take the inverse fourier transform of this power spectral density you will get the auto correlation function and auto correlation function at the zero time lag will be the average power so it will be 1 upon 2 pi integration minus infinity to infinity s y y omega d omega and you can calculate this it will be n not r upon 4l for this type of system for the time being this was the lecture 8 of the lecture series of random process detection and estimation in the next lecture we will discuss about the objective of signal detection and signal parameter estimation till then thanks for listening this lecture thank you